Welcome to another edition of Coffee with the Goose, where we talk about things that are, remember, interesting, fascinating, irritating. We're going to be really irritating this time. I'm the Goose. I know it's been a little while, but uh, hey, we're back in the saddle, ready to rock and roll. Everybody's healthy and uh, very blessed. I, I hope you and your uh, family are as well. Uh, before we get going, let's uh, get our medicine, shall we? My coffee, as you know, very strong, like my opinion. And I've got some creamer in there to make it sweet, just like me. All right, and just add some panda salt too. Yes, life is good. Anyhow, today we're going to uh, talk about, uh, like I said, some irritating things. Not so much pet peeves, but just uh, quirky little things people do. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll be the judge, jury, not the executioner, but uh, I'll tell you whether I think it's uh, okay or not okay, okay? And again, again I'm as weird as anybody, but... Uh, Let's start with pets, of course. Most of us own pets, right? We'll uh, start with cats. I am a dog man, not a cat man. I don't, I don't hate cats. I don't under understand them. I've uh, lived with uh, people who've had cats. They're just, just not my thing. Anyhow, a strange experience years ago with a, a good friend of mine, Pete, who uh, used to uh, work at the uh, same radio station as I. Pete had a cat. One day I was over at his house and uh, we uh, ordered a pizza. Pizza arrived sitting on the dining room table. The cat jumps up on the table and walks across the pizza. I kid you not. Pete, being the owner of the cat, doesn't bat an eye. He just picks up a slice and starts eating. Didn't, didn't even think about it. And I'm thinking a lot, <laughs> but it's not my house. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. So I ate the pizza too, but I made sure to eat the part of the pizza that had no cat prints on it, okay? So, um, Pete, are you okay? No, you're not. Sorry, Pete, love you. <laughs> the second one concerns dogs. And like I said, I'm a dog man. This one uh, is about a uh, uh, brother-in-law named Jeff, great guy. And he is a dog lover to the nth degree. He has several dogs and you know, uh, they're, they're like a member of the family, you know, they protect you, they warn you about bad people, maybe breaking in your house, what have you. Um, and they, uh, you know, they'll sleep with you. Uh, that's, uh, my dog Cooper, such a great guy. He actually lets my daughter sleep in his bed, in his bedroom. What a great dog, right? <laughs> Sorry, Cammy. Um, anyhow, uh, Jeff, uh, feeds his dogs, uh, you know, uh, table straps like many of us do. When I was a little kid, my mom and dad said, uh, you'll clean your plate or you won't leave the table. That's fine because our dog camped out under the table and she was very well fed. So I never had a problem with that. But Jeff, God bless him, would feed his dogs ice cream, for example, out of a, uh, you know, a, a bowl and a, a spoon and he would eat it He'd eat the ice cream, feed it to his dog using the same spoon. Okay then, Jeff, are you okay? Yeah, you're okay, it's a dog, right Cooper? Go lay down, I'm doing a show. Okay buddy, go lay down. Uh, the next story uh, is about a uh, pet that we had years ago, a chinchilla. For those of you who don't know what chinchillas are, they're like hamsters, okay? But they're a little different breed. Chinchillas, look it up are they have emotional issues. Not psychological, psychiatric. I kid you not, they need medicine. They, number one, they can't stand to be alone and they're very needy. Uh, you need to take them out of their cage at least a couple times a day and give them TLC and everything's gonna be okay, okay? No, not okay. Chinchilla, uh, this chinchilla we had was named Oreo. Beautiful, beautiful uh, animal. Uh, number one, it, it, like any chinchilla, did not like being alone. But when we opened the cage to get him out and show him all kinds of love, didn't want anything to do with us. Okay, fine. Uh, we'd have him in, his, in our lap and pet him and he'd jump off and hide and we'd have to go catch him and he'd chew up the furniture and wiring too. Just crazy animal. So uh, Oreo the chinchilla, uh, had to go. Uh, <laughs> it was a little bit too much. Uh, so Oreo, are you okay? Uh, no, you're not okay. I hope you're uh, doing better in your new home. Um, 
Now, of course, being married to a Filipina, yes, like I mentioned, I got pandasol here. I'm just waiting to munch on. Uh, one little quirky, and I know it's cultural. I'm not going to be too hard on you guys. The uh, uh, the pointing with your uh, lips cracks me up every time. Lest my uh, my wife will say, "Get my get my uh, purse." I'll say, "Where is it?" She goes, "Over there, over there." <laughs> All you guys do that. It is so funny. Are you guys okay? Yeah, you're okay. But this next uh, example, not very good. And for those of you who are Filipina or you know uh, or have friends who are, you understand this. Anybody, anybody who gets accused of something they did not do is going to be upset, right? Well, Filipinos, as you know, you guys, you're not, you have all, you have control of the matter uh, uh, mentally and socially. You're the masters at it. And so Filipinos will not raise a fuss, raise their voice, yell at you, create a scene. That's not how they roll. But if you accuse them, and I saw this, uh, heard about this happening with my wife uh, about a year ago, somebody at work accused her of doing something she didn't do. That did not go very well. Needless to say, the offending party had to apologize and backtrack very quickly. She did not uh, respond uh, in a very, <laughs> very friendly way. Eventually, it you know it uh, you know all all's well that ends well. But just the other day, one of her coworkers who was a Filipino, a Filipino, was accused by a coworker of doing something, and he did not like that. And when they got everything squared away, he went and jumped in this guy's face and said, "Don't you ever accuse me?" Blah 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 blah. And he whoa, he had to apologize too. He, don't don't accuse a Filipino of doing something they didn't do. You're gonna pay the price. Um, so uh, this coworker of Raquel, are you okay? Oh yeah, you're okay. But the other guy who accused you, is he okay? No, you're not okay. And you know better now, don't you? A <laughs> uh, couple more um, examples of uh, strange behavior. Uh, one is uh, about driving. Now I'm not gonna turn this into a. Um, uh, pet peeve episode. We can go on all day. Uh, and there are many examples in driving of pet peeves. People who uh, tailgate, people who swerve in and out of traffic, don't use their uh, their uh, uh, traffic signal, they go too fast, what have you. A lot of things drive me crazy. But, you know, I don't get upset about it. That's just how people are. But this one is, it again, doesn't make me mad. I just shake my head when I see this. I'm on the highway, four-lane highway, driving at cruise control, and and I pass, I, I'm i attempting to pass somebody, whether or not they may be in cruise control, they may not be, their ego takes over, their pride takes over, they don't want you to pass them. I'm on a four lane highway, what's the problem? They keep speeding up, they don't want you to pass them. It's just, you know, you can't figure people out, but it's just, again, I just shake my head, oh, man, you people drive me nuts. But that's driving. Uh, so you folks who do that, are you okay? Mm, no, you're not okay. <laughs> Last story, okay? This one has to do with my dear mother, who um, uh, this weekend will be the 20th anniversary of her passing. And I love you, Mom. I still miss you. Uh, now, three of my siblings, uh, she was cremated. Three of my siblings have ashes, okay? and uh, in an urn, and uh, the urn that they have is kind of small, about, you know, yay big, and, uh, but it's mom, you know, they, they, they want to remember her. One of my brothers, Jeff, great guy, always has a great sense of humor, doesn't want to take things too seriously, very responsible guy, but he's full of, uh, full of life and laughter. He will take mom's urn, put her, put it in her, <laughs> on the kitchen table or dining room table and say, ah, oh, mom, come on, you're having dinner with us. You know, it's beautiful. One day, you know where this is going, don't you? One day a friend stopped over for dinner. He didn't know. And he picked up the urn. What does it look like? A salt shaker. He tries to shake my mom's ashes on his food. Now, luckily it's an urn. It doesn't come out. But my brother Far from being offended, he almost fell out of his chair laughing. He said, no, no, you can't eat my mom. <laughs> it was classic. So um, 
uh, you know, I would have lost it too. So this uh, friend of Jeff's, uh, are you okay? Yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> a little embarrassing. Uh, and uh, Jeff and mom, you're all okay. Like I said, I still miss you, mom. Um, anyhow, that's it. I know you guys have uh, some great example of quirky little things that people do. And, uh, you know, maybe it's acceptable, maybe it's not. And hopefully it doesn't make you mad. It just makes you laugh. People are strange. I know, because I'm one of them, right? Give me some of your examples. I want to read your comments and, and uh, you know, learn more about you and what you have to say and some of your experiences, okay? That's it for this edition of Coffee with the Goose. Thank you so much for watching. We will do another show very soon. Going to do some camping here, so stick with me. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.